Amen. God bless you. Pick your Bibles. Stand up and let's quickly take a text and let me round up this topic that I must finish today. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Let's continue from where we stopped last week. Uh, last two weeks. I had to be away last week. Okay. Verse 10 and verse, verse 9, 10 and 11. For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry. Ye are God's building. According to the grace of God which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another builded thereon, but let every man take it how he builded thereupon. And my text is from verse 11, for other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. May the Lord have blessing to the reading of his word. God bless you. Be seated. And we continue with the topic, the foundation of our faith. And remember that we are still answering that question Apostle Paul asked in 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 5 where he said, examine yourself whether you be in the faith. Examine yourself. All we've been trying to do, I have emphasized this several times, the burden in my heart and that is the truth. The burden in my heart is what has, I've always believed since this ministry started. I've always believed that if we get the people to have a personal relationship with God, our job as preachers will be easier. If we can get the people to have a personal relationship with God, our job as Christians will be easier. I mean, as preachers, will be easier. You see? And that's why the most important program in this church is the program of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Since this ministry started, the Lord made me to know, or rather gave me that wisdom, and it has worked for me, it has worked for this ministry. That what we stand for in the midst of the present modern day apostasy in Christianity today, what we stand for, it will not be easy for the modern day Christian to believe us and follow us. In this age, the worldliness have taken over the church fully is exalted. Sin is exalted. The church has become more worldly. Now the world learns the fashions of this world from the church. Designer cars are in the church by ministers. Designer wares are displayed by ministers. If there's a fashion designer sitting down here and you want to advertise your work, they will be designing it for pastors to wear and advertise it for them. It's in the church. In this modern day, we are holiness has taken the back seat. And now it doesn't matter, it's the order of the day. For a sister, a woman, a woman, Christian woman in this age, to from her heart drop wearing trousers, is going to be a supernatural action. There's nothing you will open in this Bible and show her that she will agree. The reason is, what are you saying? When so 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 reverend doctor in his church see anointing nyafu nyafu, see testimony nyafu nyafu, and all the sisters are wearing trousers, and he said it doesn't matter. You know God, Pastor. You see. For a woman in this age, Christian woman, to appear natural without any of those perversions they call fashion, it will be a supernatural action. When we preach it, for anybody to accept it, 
That is why when this ministry started, we say, don't put the cart before the horse. The horse is supposed to pull the cart and not to push the cart. Ministers, in the entire message, you are pushing the cart. It will be more difficult to get to your destination than to pull it. And therefore, we have always believed when we started this ministry that if you get the people to receive the Holy Ghost, then if what we are saying is the truth, the Holy Ghost will confirm it to the people hearing us. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's so important. My, 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 my heart desire is to have somebody that will, because of a personal revelation, make a decision to go to heaven. Rather than this follow, follow religion. When a sister came to me to send the text, I wanted to see her and explain her revelation to her. She saw a revelation of rapture and she's shaking because the rapture took place and she didn't go. So she's worried. Another one again during the week. Talk about, so talk about someone was sharing with me. Maybe you are here now, the sister. She said she came. And so many people in this church did not make it. She came. A lot of seats were empty. A lot of seats were empty. He said, but from the sister's side, there were more sisters in the church than brothers. Now she's Siam. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> she, the one today that was telling me, she said, she, when she couldn't see me, she didn't see me, she said, she picked phone to call my number. He said there was a voicemail that was answering the owner of this, mess, uh, this phone has gone. She said, which one that one? He said, she decided to send text. He said, the answer came in Hebrew writing. That was the answer to her. Uh -huh. And she knew that the, what was written there is that the owner of this phone, that you know Pastor Moses Alu is gone. Who else is gone? Who else is gone? <laughs> eh? Sister, put down your hand. They said, many of them not go. Well, why I made reference to that is, let me tell you, these two sisters, they are candidates for the rapture. And God, maybe they are taking what we are saying concerning home going lightly, then God is using that revelation to wake them up. From today, those two sisters will do everything to make it. To, I'm sure when they woke up, they found that dream, they say, thank God. You know, there are some dreams when you wake up, say, hey, thank God, say, a dream. Then there are some dreams where you they do, you go say, oh, make this thing, make her make no, make no wake up, make her make, make continue. Church, listen. What we are saying here is the truth. Believe it. Believe it. Listen to what we are telling you here. One of these days, you will remember what I'm telling you. We shall be gone home. This rapture we talk about. But the rapture is for those who are true Christians. And you can never be a true Christian until you have a true revelation of who Jesus Christ is. Because your relationship with him is determined by who you know him to be. I've emphasized that so much in the past uh, sermons I have preached on this same topic. But let me pick my thought today in rounding up this in Philippians chapter 3. Apostle Paul. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Because Apostle Paul, I love that man so much. 
thank God for him. Of course, he's our apostle. So, listen, church. When people see us take the stand that we take, worldly religious Christians, they think it's frustration that is making us act the way we act. It is not frustration. Do you think that I don't have money to buy a ring for my wife? I have a... After all, praise the Lord. If not gold, there's something that still looks like gold. If you wear an ego, it's not gold. And when gold people start, you should be stand now. So don't think I cannot buy gold. And I make me say, you know, after all, I can be changing it after every six, three, three months. When the thing fed, I will change them again. And they coat, they, they coat them, be like gold. Or you think that my wife is too fat to wear trousers. Trousers and a cloth, and tell her the swamp. So they measure your size. Every size. It is. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It is not so. It's not so. Amen. How you think it's frustration that is making me to be a preacher? If it is frustration that is making me to be a preacher, now this I enter message I go preach. I go preach the thing where go make me get money where where. But what I'm preaching here is not giving me anything, shishi, nothing, because the kind of people that believe. They don't get money. <laughs> the rich people cannot take my kind of message. Hallelujah. So, you can see that there is a revelation behind my stand. There's a revelation. It's a revelation. It's a revelation. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That's the truth. I keep saying it. You can never rise beyond the level of revelation of who Jesus Christ is. It determines how you relate with him. It determines your Christian standing. I challenge you today. Challenge anybody that is a fornicator and yet you are going to church and you are listening to me. If you know who Jesus Christ is, you will not fornicate. Now that's the truth. You sitting there, you're a drunkard. You go to beer bar and sit down and drink. If you know who he is, you will not do that. Let me also tell you, you who gossip brothers, you who rejoice at the calamity of others, you who are there in all manner of wickedness, the same thing happening in the world there, with your Bible in your hand, you are doing it. I challenge you, if you know Jesus Christ, you won't act like that. You won't act like that. You won't act like that. There is something from that knowledge that restrain you. And in verse 4, Philippians chapter 3, from verse 4, this is how Apostle Paul put it, concerning those who were challenging his doctrine and, 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 and insulting him and saying all manner of things concerning him. This was his reply. He said, though I might also have confidence in the flesh, because he has his own personal testimony of who he is as far as the Judaic religion is concerned. Those of you who say you are reverend doctors, he has something that is higher than reverend doctor. If you ever think that you are anything at all, he was a member of the highest spiritual ruling body of Israel. He was a member. Before something happened to him, that made him to take the stand he now takes. For which reason they are persecuting and abusing him and calling him all manner of names. The thing that made him to stop going to the temple to worship. The thing that made him, hallelujah, blessed be the name of the Lord. To trap all those and he tell them, let nobody judge you anymore in the type of food you eat or drink. In all this moon celebration of this moon, this and that. He said, Sabbath day, you should not do anything. He said, there's nothing like that. Let nobody judge you there anymore. Why? He had a revelation. He said, all this, there are a shadow of things to come. There's something he knows. The body is of 
Christ. There was a revelation he had. But see the way he put it. In verse 4. Let me read it again. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh. If any other man think that he had whereof he might trust in the flesh. He said, I more. I should be the one that should do that more than all of you. See his boasting. Circumcised the eighth day. Of the stock of Israel. Of the tribe of Benjamin. An Hebrew of the Hebrews. Original Hebrew. Just like an Igbo man will say, my papa, my mama, na Igbo. Nobody will say, Yoruba, Mary, Hausa, Mary, Igbo. My own original Igbo. Hebrew of the Hebrew. He said, as touching the law of Moses, the group he belonged is a Pharisee. He was of the Pharisee order. So, so, so. He said, and concerning zeal, verse 6. He was so zealous, he was persecuting the church. Touching the righteousness which is in the law, the laws of Moses, such me, I was blameless. But see it, verse 7. But what things were gained to me, what did he do with them? I counted loss. For who? For who? That when he came across Jesus Christ, all those worldly things that he had achieved in his religion, he dropped them. Do you know today one of the reasons why the denominational leaders cannot follow the teachings of William Abraham when they come across it is pride. It's pride. It is pride. Because I know that they know that what that man taught is the truth. They didn't hear, they are hearing us now. We are the children of the prophet. We are echoing what our prophets say. They hear us on television. They see our track, one your pastor. They know what we are saying is the truth. But pride. If it's not pride, are you going to tell me that Adeboye? He's going to change his doctrine of the Godhead and baptize in the name of Jesus. That will mean failure on his part. Pride. Nothing more. Pride. I say it's pride. For a preacher to come and truly say, I used to think like this before. Now, my eyes are open. Church, baptism is in the name of Jesus. You know, the day he says it, the whole redeemed will baptize in the name of Jesus. The day Kumuyi says this, the whole deeper life will change it because a lot of people is their pastor they are following. And I pity all of you Christians that place your faith on a man instead of the word of God. Apostle Peter, Paul said, yes, follow me. But follow me as I follow Christ. That means he's still telling you, the day I stop following Christ, don't follow me again. That's why he said, follow me as I follow Christ. William Abraham, enter me say believer. He said, the Bible is my absolute. If I say anything that is contrary to this Bible, say, drop my own and hold the one of the Bible. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. But they said they follow their pastor. See, we people life will not. You know, I told somebody yesterday. <laughs> yesterday I told somebody. I said. There is a legislation that is going on. They have succeeded in America, in most parts of Europe. Hate speech. They call it hate speech. Don't say anything that will paint somebody else bad. You see, you know who they are targeting. Now, Christians, because Christians are the only ones that say Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to the Father except by me. They will tell you, How can you say only by you, Jesus? So they will stop you. So if you say anything is bad, then they will arrest you. 
they will charge you to call that it is a hate speech. You know everything I follow, follow. They are debating it now in National Assembly in Nigeria here. Yeah. So I say, let me say some things fast before that law takes effect. Praise God. So that if they arrest me, they cannot arrest the tapes. The tapes have gone far. Praise the Lord. There was a time that Kumuyi said television is of the devil. Deeper life will not watch television. But as soon as Kumuyi's revelation changed, they had their own television channel the church, everybody now began to also own television. So, their revelation is not on the word, it's on the pastor. Follow, follow. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. His pride. I'm reading somewhere. His pride. Where am I? Which verse? Verse 7. But what things we are gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss. For what? The excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung that I may win Christ. Hey, Jesus. I don't know how many people are catching the depth of this statement. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. See the way he put it. That I may win Christ and be found in him, Christ. Not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ. The righteousness which is of God by faith. Because of it, he counted all the losses. All his achievement. All the revelation he had concerning the law. And all the practices of the law. That he was so perfect until they elevated him to the position of one of the leaders in the Sahandrian Council. All that one, he dropped it. He dropped it. Bishop, you can't drop your own because the day you drop it, they will remove you from the leadership of Christian Association of Nigeria. You know it. You know it. You know. You know that's the reason. And you know what? how you struggle to get there. Can executives, they campaign for it. They spend money. It's serious politics that they rig themselves. Just to be on top. And you know what unites them? Then one of them will drop it. Now, 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 see all that Apostle Paul went through. Despite all this, hallelujah, he dropped all this. He dropped his fame. He dropped this. All his achievements. The humiliation he was going through. He dropped all this. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The next verse says the reason why he did it. Why did he do it? That I may know him. There are four things, if time permits me, I will bring out from that now. And time must permit me because I must finish this thing today. Listen, church. Number one, he said that I may know him. Know him. Why? Because the more, the closer you come to the cross, the closer you are in relationship with Jesus Christ, the more you discover the deep mystery of salvation. Salvation is mysterious. We need to know him. Some of you are not here for Bible study, the Sunday school, to see how 
two ministers, they argued. Two pastors were arguing on the, 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 uh, the, the appearance of Jesus Christ. His existence. When did he begin his existence? You see? And it takes somebody who is studying to bring up such arguments. Because when you, when you, the more you, you, you study, the more mysterious, the more mysterious it becomes. That's why he looked at those people. You just follow me. It's not because of the miracle. It's because of what you ate. In John chapter 6, he says, so because you ate bread yesterday, that's why people are looking at me. You are following, pushing me up and down. Today you are hungry now. You are running to come. You are coming to Jesus because you have a problem. After the problem is solved, you say bye-bye till next time. This Jesus is a good God. He's a good God. Anytime you come, and you even see his goodness more, when you just left your husband's bedroom, I mean your boyfriend's bedroom, you fornicated last night, you stood up, and then you took your bath, put perfume, carry Bible, go to church. You see? And the infection that you got through the fornication, you came to church. Oh, Father, heal me. Anointing hit you. Bah. The thing went. Oh, this Jesus is a good God. Oh, he's a good God. He's a good God. He's a good God. Oh. See, they carry cocaine. Suddenly a prophet picks you. Brother, the Lord is telling me you are going to to where? To Singapore. Because they're there and they go die. <laughs> Singapore, Malaysia. Where did they die again? China. Uh -huh. Brother, the Lord is telling me you're going to China. He said, yes, you're going for business. Yes. The Lord say you will make it. Oh my. This God is God. I like this bride assembly. Which prophet? Give me that prophecy. Who? Prophet Emeka Bodechi. Amen. Praise the Lord. But one day, that same cocaine pusher, that same fornicator, we read another scripture that says, God answering not the prayer of sinners. Because every sinner knows you are a sinner. So you will say, ah, but how come he answer my own? There's a mystery there. That is how we know him. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That's why Apostle Paul Despite all, by the time he came across Christ, he knew that there is something deeper about this Jesus than those who shout Jesus. Jesus, some people, Jesus, not talisman. Talisman. Blood of Jesus. Talisman. Con jama with shallow water. I am covered. Just make sure Shiloh water is by the side. Even if that girl is possessed, the demon will follow her. If I sleep with her, the demon cannot do me anything. Shiloh water is by the side. Can't do me anything. In fact, before I sleep with her, I'll sprinkle Shiloh water on the bed. Yes. And I'll plead the blood of Jesus. Blood of Jesus, speak for me. Blood of Jesus, speak for me. And I will shout my name. And I will shout her name. We sleep together. The demon cannot do us anything. Yes, now, it is a revelation, the level of revelation you have that makes you relate like that with him. That is the reason why he said there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The people that have taken God for granted, and of course, you took him for granted because you didn't know him. And Apostle Paul said that I may know him, and all of us, that should be our prayer. Our prayer is that we might know him because it is the foundation of our faith because it is upon this rock of who he is that he will build his church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. The foundation of the faith, the Christian faith is knowing who Jesus Christ is. And how do we know him? It's by studying. 2 Timothy 2.15 says, study 
to show thyself approved unto God. Hallelujah. A workman that need not to be ashamed. Hallelujah. Rightly divide, dividing the word of truth. Now you should be ready always, Peter said it, to give an answer of the reason of our hope. He said it. If I don't have a hope, I will not deny myself all the deniers I have here. There is a hope I have. There is a hope of a life beyond this life. And so, so there is a reason why I have decided to take the stand that I take. I am not fornicating. It's not because I am impotent. No. It's because there is something else I'm looking at. Study. Study. People don't study. Especially in Lagos. It's only what the puppy tells you. After service now, you won't know where your Bible is again till next Sunday. No time for yourself to know this God by study. They came before Jesus Christ. He came to his own. His own received him not. The Jews did not receive him because they did not understand who he was. He started to take them and study to know who he is. They were calling all manner of names. You are Bezebub. You are this. You are that. You are possessed. You are this. You are a liar. You are this. Religious people. He faced them in John 5 39. He said, search the scriptures. In them, you think you have eternal life. He said, for they are they, those scriptures that testify of me. Search. You want to know who he is? Search. Study. If I was not studying, I would have been a denominational preacher now. If I was not studying, it was because I was studying that I came across the ministry of William Abraham. And when I say study, study there is searching, seeking the knowledge of truth. And he who seeks will find. You are not yet getting revelation because you are not yet seeking. If you seek revelation, you will find it. God will be leading you to books you will read. God will be leading you to sermons you will hear. Knowledge now is easier acquired than ever before. In the internet, type anything you want to know, you will see them nyafu nyafu. Study to know this God. Study to know. There are two types of studies. There is study to know. So that you will line up your life and there is study for head knowledge. So that you will post and show everybody you know serpent seed, he doesn't know it. You know what type of thing, he doesn't know it. They are the ones that will take their Bible and then go and jump Sabbatarians. Seventh-day Adventists, they know Bible. Don't just carry Bible anywhere. When they hook them, then they go say, wait, make a call my pastor. Uh, uh, Daddy, uh, uh, concerning this uh, uh, woman preacher, uh, which other scripture? <laughs> you don't know why you come out. Why are you anxious to run and go and tell people? What you yourself you have not yet established in it. I never ever studied because I was going to teach anybody. Anytime I studied before this ministry started, Nine years or so before this ministry started, I gave my life to Christ. And two weeks after I gave my life to Christ, I was already sharing the goodness of the Lord with people around me. Yes, now. Hallelujah. And there was an insatiable desire to know him. Especially knowing my religious background. I wanted to know the difference between Christianity and other religions. And it was getting more and more interesting because the only practical religion on earth is Christianity. This sign shall follow them that believe. Practical. Practical. It is only the Christian leader that boasted that if you kill me, I will resurrect again. And on the third day, he resurrected. And he has not died again till today. He's alive. Hallelujah. And we see him. We see him. Hallelujah. He speaks. We hear his voice. If not, now will they show me? Before I became a Christian, I didn't see anything. No, I know some people they see. For Bia Paladin, they see self. Amen. Yes, now. On top woman, then they see. 
Now, nobody that can see that they talk about me here. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Here am I. Sick, 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 sick that I was before. Every day hospital. But now, once he let me know the healing power that will release on the cross on Calvary, from 1989 till now, I have not gone to the hospital. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, now. And God will not allow me break my bone and go to the hospital. God will not allow me go for any surgery. God will not allow me go take injection just until I know if you work again. No, no, no. He will not. Why? Because I'm a believer of the cross. That by his stripes I am healed. And I confirmed it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's true. Oh yes, his promise is true. God promises something is true. I have trusted and tested and tried it. And I know his promise is true. That's why I believe there is a heaven. That's why I believe there is a hell. And because I know there is a heaven, I am working everything to make sure I go to that heaven. Because I know there is a hell. Match one coal of fire and see how you feel. Then they are telling me they are going to dump the sinners inside a lake. You know what is a lake? Have you ever seen a volcano? Have you ever seen a volcano? Hell! You cannot carry a coal. Fire! Fire will burn some people. Oh! Lord, may you open the window in heaven make we see us and they burn inside there when they preach now. They are not ready to repent. So that we will too, we go laugh. Say, huh? Chaps, now they burn. Chaps, now they laugh for say, we know we are trousers. Now they wear trousers. Chaps, now they say, no. Uh huh? Burn, oh, muku na burn. Muku na burn. Abraham told the rich man, there's a gap between us. You don't ask for water. Now, now you go ask for water. Which water? Nobody, I cannot cross here to your side. There is a gap. Stay your own. I stay on my own. That is the style, the way you chose. See where you ended up. This is the way I chose. This is where I have ended up. It is evidence that there is a heaven, that there is a hell. It's a revelation that produces that. Praise the Lord. It's a revelation. Drunkards, look at me. 419, look at me. There's 419 where they go, Brother Assembly. Brother Assembly, 419. Ask your neighbor, are you? 419. 419. Praise the Lord. They know how to get our phone numbers. Obina. <laughs> they won't finish Obina recently. <laughs> they know how to get our phone numbers to dupe us. Inside church. One of these days, where I am, you will not be able to dupe me. You will be too busy with pains to even remember my phone number in hell. Hell is real. Church. Church. Some people will enter hell. Fire will burn them. All because they didn't know who Jesus Christ is. If I ask you who is Jesus Christ, I say, oh, he's the, he's the savior of the world. He says, you are repeating what your pastor told you. You are repeating what you read somewhere. That's why he asked his disciples, you, you when they follow me, who do you say I am? Because you must have your own personal revelation. Stop saying, some say you are Elijah. Some say, some say, some say, you, call you, you in person. What is your own revelation of who Jesus Christ is? Upon that rock, I build my church. Upon that rock, I build my church. Praise the Lord. And how do I know him? Praise the Lord. We can only know him by revelation. Apostle Paul in Galatians chapter 1 was letting us know his own background. How that when he met with Jesus Christ, he said he did not go to those apostles that were following him before him. And we know how Jesus Christ met him. 
there was an encounter. Somebody here, have you had any encounter with Christ? He was prospering in his evil. But one day, he had an encounter that redirected his life. Somebody here, ask yourself very sincerely, have you had any encounter with Christ? He met him on the way where he was going to do his evil and met him there and struck him until don't wait until I repeat don't wait until yes Lord don't wait until he strikes you until he strikes you don't wait until he strikes you I was telling my wife I think a few days ago I think she's the one no no what do you call her? I said, I do my house yesterday or so. I said, there was a revelation I received. I said, I don't know how to say it because if I say it, somebody will think I am cursing you. So I said, I don't know how I will package it. The Lord was telling me clearly. He said, it is your weakness that will kill you. I heard him telling me clearly tell them. He said it was a message. Thus said the Lord. He said that weakness that you are romancing with instead of fighting out of it you are romancing it is that weakness that will kill you. If your weakness is drinking beer it is that beer that will kill you. If your weakness is womanizing it is a woman that will destroy you. Was it not a woman that destroyed Samson? Was womanizing not his weakness? You see? If your weakness is telling lies, it is that lie that will kill you. If your weakness is anger, it is that anger that will kill you because in anger, you will slap somebody and you will die. And you will be charged for murder. Beat your wife, you hear? Continue to beat her. Beat your wife. One day you will carry your hand like this. Hit her. You will die. They're not going to send her your wife again. Now, murder. Nobody will listen to the reason why you beat her. If you be say, now knife, it takes chuk you. Now you say, collect her, chuka, 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 until he die, 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 dead go. They're not going to say, now he chuk you. Instead of you, to run. When you see a woman carry knife, they come. No be wrong, you go run. Instead of your own, you got angry. You want to kill me, I will show you. Yaka, waka, waka. She died. Nobody go say a carry knife pursue you. He told me, tell them your weakness will kill you. Your weakness. I don't know who that message is for. I receive it. I received that on, on Friday or so. He said, tell them that your weakness will kill you. What is your weakness? Fight it or come out of it all. Come out of it. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And God struck him. Well, true, true. There are some people that before God can reveal himself to you, he has to strike you. You see, and he can use anything to strike you. He struck me for, 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 for out of efforts inside prison yard. In that broken down estate, then he now came to reveal himself to me. And when he struck Apostle Paul, Apostle Paul in Galatians chapter 1, he said, he did not go to those who were in the message before him. Those old disciples. What did he do? He said he went to Arabia. He withdrew for about three years. What was he doing? He was studying. Who is this Jesus? A light struck him when he was on his horse. He fell down. The light was so bright until it blinded him. And he was in that confusion. The voice says, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he answered, Who are you, Lord? What was the answer? 
I am Jesus whom you persecute. You're going around killing Christians and you think it is Christians you are persecuting. It is me you are persecuting. It's me you are persecuting. You're going about gossiping children of God and you think it is that sister you are gossiping. It is Christ you are gossiping. You are setting traps. You are duping one another. You are lying to one another. You think you are doing it to someone. It is Christ you are doing it. Because you get to know that person because of Christ. He believed you to be a brother because of Christ. You met in the church. You do anything to him, you are doing it against Christ. What happened? Blessed be the name of the Lord. It awoke a curiosity in him to know who is this Jesus. Who is this Jesus? Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let's read one scripture, Matthew 22. Matthew 22. Hallelujah. Verse 41. Matthew 22 and verse 41. While the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them, Say, What think ye of Christ? Whose son is he? You see? Whose son is he? They say unto him, the son of David. That's all they knew him to be. So if you know him to be the son of David, then you will treat him like a common Jew around. That's why he knew that's how all you people see me is you have traced my lineage to David. So I'm a son of David. That's why you are dealing with me like a human being. Then he went further. He said unto them, verse 43. How then did David in the spirit call him Lord? Saying, the Lord, that is 101 verse 1. And 110 verse 1. Saying, the Lord said unto my Lord, sit down on my right hand till I make thine enemies thy footstool. If David then called him Lord, how is he his son? You see now? You say I'm the son of David, Abby. But the Bible says he is the son of David. The angel gave the prophecy. There's a prophecy that says he shall sit on the throne of his father, David. So, yes, he's the son of David. But he's telling them further. Amen. If you look at me as an ordinary son of David, then see how oh, if I'm a son of David, you look at me the way you look, then why did David in the spirit prophesy and call me Lord? So David, even recognize, how can the father call him call his speaking Lord? Uh -huh. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Verse 46. And no man was able to answer him a word. Neither does any man from that day forth ask him any more questions until you answer that one. You don't need to ask him again. <laughs> Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. When he said, those, the, the, the truth about it is for you to know who he is. The proper answer of who Jesus Christ is. The truth is you can never know who Jesus Christ is until the Father reveal him to you. That's why he told Peter, we well, answered him in Matthew 16, thou art Christ the son of the living God. He told him, flesh and blood did not reveal it to you, church. That is why Apostle Paul offered that prayer that I may know him. That's why I say the only way to know him is by prayer. Because it is only by revelation you can know who he is. And it's not everybody that has that revelation. You see? You see? Why among your prayers every day is, Lord, reveal yourself to me. Lord, I want to know you. Lord, I want to know you. Why will you not ask that question, I want to know you? Somebody here. When you know you try your best to live a holy life. You try your best to live a life pleasing before him. And yet frustration is still around you. I see those 
who are living useless life, when they call upon you, he answers them. Isn't it a mystery? I expect you, instead of grumbling, to say, come, this God, how you be safe? I want to know you. Is it possible for God to fold his hands and see his child being tormented by the devil and he'll be looking at him and still tell me, I love you. Anytime I go and pray, he will say, my son, I have answered you. I am with you. How can you be with me and you are seeing me and you are tormenting me? And the truth is, he is with you. Because he said, I will never forsake you. I will never leave you. I will be with you until the end. In Isaiah, he said, when you pass through the flood, I'll be there with you. Through the river, I'll be there. Through the fire, I'll be with you. Anywhere you are, God is there. But how will he fold his hand and see me in torment? He said, all things work together for good, including that torment. You see why we must study to know him? From anything now, no food, nothing. I have all my certificates. All my friends, girls, a sister may be saying this. All they need to do is open their leg and they are getting jobs. Then they change job anyhow, promotion anyhow. But I say I will never open my leg for fear of God. I will not defy the temple of God. Oh yeah, give me a better job than them now. You see, they look me. Four years don't pass. My certificate don't they rotten. And you tell me I love you, I love you. How do you, which type of love is this? Now, now, it's not for you to crumble. It's for you to study. These things make you, provoke you to know who is this God? How does he act? How does he walk? How? 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 It's a mystery. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That's why you need a personal revelation from him. Flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, Peter. But my father which is in heaven. That is why, hallelujah, blessed be the name of the Lord. They were talking about Jesus Christ, saying one thing or the other concerning him, and John chapter 3, and verse 4, 27, John says, a man can receive nothing except he be given him from above. When that scripture says, a man can receive nothing until it's given to him from above, Canal people quickly first look at the card that you have is given to you from above. That is not the meaning of that scripture. The wife you have is given to you from above. The house you build is given to you from above. The promotion, of course, everything we receive comes from above. But in the context of this usage in John 3.27, what he's saying is, you can never understand anything unless God from above grants you understanding. It's a revelation he's talking about. Hallelujah. That's why in Luke chapter 10, verse 22, concerning who Jesus and his father is, as we were arguing this morning in our Sunday school, he says, no man knoweth who the son is but the father. And no one knows who, hallelujah, the father of Jesus Christ is but the son. And he to whom the son will reveal him. Unless Jesus Christ show you who the father is, you will never know. Unless the father show you, let you know who the son is, you will never know who Jesus Christ is. That's what the Bible is saying. Jesus himself said it. No man knows who the son is but the father. So it's only he who knows who he is that can reveal it to you. Does that not make you begin to pray, Lord, reveal Jesus to me? I want to know him more. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And that's why he said no man can come to him. Can we open it? John chapter 6. Except the father we send him draw you. It's a, it's a popular scripture here. Because that scripture is a foundational scripture for our faith. That also explains the various groups of 
people that come to church. Come to me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. Matthew eleven twenty eight says so, and I will give you rest. It looks as if he's saying everybody, every the call is for everybody. It's not for everybody like that, oh. Because Luke chapter six and verse forty four, he said, "No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day." Now my emphasis is on verse forty five. It is written in the prophets, and they shall be all taught of God. Every man, therefore, that has had and has learned of the Father, cometh unto me. Until the Father, you can never come until the Father reveal to you who Jesus Christ is before you can ever from your heart give up everything and follow him. Some of you, your testimony, you are going to church because some of you are even coming here today to bride assembly because some people gave you testimony that if you, 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 you want to go to, to, to you, you want to travel out, go there and see. Tap, tap, tap. Got the answer prayer there. That's the only reason you are here. That's the only reason you are here. The testimony of somebody drag you here. I had nothing before until I went to bride assembly. My life changed. And that's why you say, eh? So if I follow you, my life will change, eh? We are preaching baptism for the remission of sin. That we are where we are today because of our sin. But once that sin is remitted, Satan has nothing to accuse you anymore. Every Tuesday, we do water baptism here. And somebody is listening, eh? So once I enter that water, come out, demon husband go go. Eh, all my problem go go. Say, eh, oh yeah, we tell them they do the baptism now. You see? So such a person now, enter water. Then you ask him, have you been baptized? He said, yes. They phone me. I say, I say hello, eh, I'm a bride member. I say, which group? He said, ah, I baptize in your church. I think he's telling me something. You baptize in my church. I tell you, sir, I get a certificate where they keep, I keep a record of people where they baptize. So if you baptize in my church, what does that add to me? Because you think that makes you a member of bride assembly. There are people that are members of bride assembly, but they are not members of the bride of Jesus Christ. It's true. Because all you know is the address of bride assembly. The Jesus we talk about here, you know nothing about it. No. I say no again. No. Blessed be the name of the Lord. All that are taught, all that are taught of the Father, the Father has to teach you first before you can come to the Jesus, the Son. Is that statement itself not deep? Very, very deep. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Because in reading the scripture, you meet a lot of confusion. To know where to stand. For instance, the Bible tells us Jesus is the son of God, like I say. The same Bible again says he's the son of David. You see? <laughs> and John turned and looked at him and said, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. So he's also a lamb. Uh -uh. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. And Apostle Paul is there to tell the Jews that Jesus is the end of the law. <laughs> For righteousness. He said Jesus is the end of the law. There are no more Old Testament. And he used the book of Hebrew and tore it down. He said if there is a New Testament, he has made the old of no effect again. Therefore the old has passed away. We are now in the new. Fulfilled in Christ Jesus. <laughs> Blessed be the name of the Lord. You come to Jesus, feel it. Jesus will be telling you, I go to my father. My father and I are one. And this and that. And Philip will ask him in John 14, show us the father and we'll be satisfied. Then he will look at Philip again. 
Have I been so long with you, Philip, and you still don't know me? Have I not told you if you see me, you see the Father? Why are you saying again? I should show you the Father. Uh -huh. But those of you, you know one of the reasons, hallelujah, that they crucified Jesus Christ, they wanted to kill him, is because he posted, he confused them, destroyed this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. He, he, it's like, that Jesus said, he, he said, well, he had to provoke them to kill him to fulfill scripture. Yes, so he was deliberately provoking them. He was saying some things in a way that they will not understand. They will be angry. Destroy this temple. Temple that they cherish so much. They thought he was looking at that temple that Herod built. That they spent 49 years to build. He said in three days he will build it again. He will raise it up. You see, they understand it. They didn't know that he was referring to the authentic temple of God. Oh, glory be to God. And the authentic temple of God was standing before them. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Because the temple of God is God's dwelling place. This is my beloved son. In whom I am well pleased. He became the temple of God. Fulfilling Malachi chapter 3 verse 1. Hallelujah. Behold, I send my messenger before me. He will prepare the way for me. And the Lord whom you seek. Shall suddenly come to his temple. And that my messenger is John the Baptist. Preparing the way. And the Lord whom you seek, the God that you have been worshipping Israel, will suddenly come to his temple. Jesus Christ was his temple. And it was fulfilled at the river Jordan. He came there and announced to the whole world, this is my dwelling place. So he became the temple of God. He said, destroy this temple. Me here, in three days I will raise it up. Did he not raise it up in three days? Blessed be the name of the Lord. But he made that statement and they were so confused. They were gnashing their teeth and getting angry at him. He wanted to confuse them for another time. He said, except you eat my flesh or drink my blood, you have no life in you. Just He was saying it just to confuse them. And many of them left him. They went away. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. But he was not talking about literally eating his body. Eating there is understanding his flesh and understanding his blood. Except you eat his flesh and drink his blood. You have no life except you understand. On the last supper, he took the cup. He saw, he looked at it, he took the bread. He said, this is my flesh that was broken for you. He took the wine again. This is the cup the blood of the new covenant, new testament, drinking all of it. Hallelujah. Drink this in remembrance of me. And you and I know today what the blood has done for us. You and I know today what his flesh has done for us. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And it is that understanding that makes us take a stand with him. But they rejected him. And that's why you must know him. Because he's God's chosen place of worship. He is the counselor. He's the prince of peace. He's everything the everlasting father and above all. He's the almighty. All fulfilled in him. Therefore, it calls for you to want to know him. Blessed be the name of the Lord. When the Bible begins to call him the beginning of God's creation. The last Adam. The firstborn of every creature. The firstborn from the dead. That is who he is. The first begotten of the dead. Praise the Lord. We call him the first and the last. The alpha and omega. The author and finisher of our faith. Blessed be the name of the Lord. When Apostle Paul is telling you that that man that you are crucifying, hallelujah, was a high priest, not in the order of Aaron, but in the order of who? Mekisedek. Mekisedek, whose priesthood was an unending priesthood. And this Mekisedek, Hebrew chapter 7, he had no father, no mother, no descent, no beginning of days, no birthday, no ending of days. 
a priest abiding forever. He said, Christ came a high priest in that order. Why? Christ had three offices. A prophet, a high priest, and a king. Study very well. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Upon this rock of revelation, I build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Philippians chapter 3. Let me take quickly the second thing I learned from there. Are we there? Verse 10 again. The first one we looked at it that I may know him and he said and the power of his resurrection. The power of his resurrection. Hallelujah. He said you have to understand the power of his resurrection. The first thing you come to Christ if, if, if your association with him your fellowship with him is going to be meaningful you have to understand the power of his resurrection. That is why is it that he died and he was able to come back to life. He who seeks we find. Apostle Paul had the answer. When he was telling the Romans, in Romans chapter 8 verse 11, he said, if the spirit that raised up Christ from the dead dwell in you, hallelujah, he will quicken your mortal body by that spirit that dwell in you. Apostle Paul went for the Colossians 1 27 when he spoke about Christ in you. The hope of glory. You see? Now the power of resurrection there, blessed be the name of the Lord. He went for that to see. Hallelujah. And caught it that grave could not hold him captive. It means grave too will not hold me captive. So I have a hope. Therefore, I am not afraid to die standing for truth. That is the power of resurrection. I'm not afraid to die standing for truth. Blessed be the name of the Lord. More importantly, our God is not dead. Jesus is alive. I met him on the way to Damascus. I heard his voice. He spoke to me. He's alive. He's alive. He said, I go to prepare a place so that where I am, you can be also. In my father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I will tell you. Hallelujah. There is a hope. There is a hope of resurrection. That is what Apostle Paul said in 1 Thessalonians chapter 3. And Pastor Tati said, we, we, don't, we, don't, we don't sorrow like those who have no hope. When we lose a brother, a Christian brother, once you are sure he was a Christian, we will cry because for some time we will not see him again. But we will not cry like people who have no hope of seeing the person again. Because we know in the resurrection morning when the dead in Christ shall rise, we shall rise. Hallelujah, we shall rise. We shall rise. Hallelujah, we shall rise. Amen. We shall rise. Hallelujah. Therefore, if your wife has the Holy Ghost and she dies, you will not cry like others will cry. Because you know she's only sleeping like this young man is sleeping. You see, he's not sleeping, he's not sleeping. Okay, you are in the spirit. You see, if person die and sleep, they sleep. Like now you die, so you die, you die, so you know that's Christian death. Because you can wake up, small thing now, you don't wake up. Because one of these days, hallelujah. I will hear the voice. Hallelujah. Moses and Luke come forth. And the grave will open. Every other thing you have that follow you to the grave will die. But the life that you receive, the Holy Ghost cannot die. It keeps you there. It keeps you there. He's there to bring you back again to life. Blessed be the name of the Lord. 
That is the power of his resurrection. He gave me hope, hope to stand and declare the gospel and declare my stand for him. The next thing he said there, Amen. And the fellowship of his sufferings. And that is the one not too many people like. The fellowship of his sufferings. Fellowship of his sufferings. That is, when you come to Christ, that is exactly what I was saying earlier. Is it possible for a Christian that is living a genuine Christian life suffer on earth here? Yes, it is possible. Not just possible. Jesus Christ in Luke chapter 14. Can we open it? Let's just read one or two scriptures. Luke chapter 14. Verse 25. Are we there? Hallelujah. And there went great multitudes with him and he turned and said unto them, If any man come to me, he said, Come to me. And you respond, You came, Abby. If any man, any woman come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. And whosoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. You know why? When he say, hate father, hate this. He's not saying hatred in the usage of the word, the hatred about something you don't like. What he's talking about is that a state that you make God first above any other thing. That is, your mother must not stand in your way of your salvation. Your husband, your wife, and including that part of your life that can hinder you following Christ. You must also hate it. Make sure it does not come your way like that. That is what he means by that. And he says something from verse 28. An advice for all of us. Verse 28. For which of you intended to build a power? Sit there not down first and count the cost. Whether he have sufficient to finish it. Less happily, after he has laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all that behold it began to mock him, saying, this man began to build and was not able to finish. Why he's saying there is, so many of us, you are making noise now. I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian. He said, before you declare, count the cause of us before you let everybody know that you'll be Christian. Even not small time, you will go back to those your friends for be a pallor. They will laugh you. Sure, you say you'll be born again. You don't come join us again. Because there are things you will jump in the wilderness journey that may make you look back to the garlic and cucumber of Egypt. You begin to say, before I became a Christian, I know what I was enjoying. How come now I'm a Christian and all these things I'm going through? So, he said, be ready to carry your cross. And the cross of Jesus Christ was so heavy until one Simon had to be called to help him. The cross that he said, carry your own cross. That is, carry your own wahala. They hated him. They will hate you too. They will hate you too. They trouble him. They will trouble you too. They will trouble you too. They will trouble you too. They rejected it, they will reject you too. It is only these days that unbelieving leaders call Christians to give them national award. You see? When you see a Christian preacher, no Christian preacher of righteousness, Tunde Bakare will never be given an award by the government. Every move they make is scatter it, it destroy it. They tell them you are wrong, we are wrong, we are wrong. He tells them, Will they ever give him a word? Oh, if they give him a word, then Ahab will give Micaiah a word. Micaiah, Ahab is giving you a national award. Where 
Where is Zekaya? How many of you were, if you were not here for vigil, can I see your hand up? Last Friday vigil. Oh, oh you are many. Just wave it. Wave it to your shame. Wave it, wave it. Wave it. Sleep, 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 sleep. Sleep, sleep, sleep. There's something we are introducing that we started last Friday. From 9 o'clock till 10 30 every Friday night. Come and hear the voice of William Abraham. We'll be playing the tape here. Come and hear it by yourself. Why I remember it? Because last Sunday, last Friday, he was preaching the anointed ones at the end time. That was when he brought about Zekiah. Zedekiah, the priest that slapped Micaiah. Micaiah said, Thus said the Lord. Zedekiah also said, Thus said the Lord. Uh -huh. Zedekiah, praise God. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You want, you want to come to Christ and think it will not cost you anything. It must cost you something. You have not met him. Every Christian, at a point in time in your Christian journey, you must be able to say, this is the cost of the decision I made to follow Christ. Don't only look at the blessings. There are the blessing part of it. Because from his side, it was not only water that came out, it was water and blood. Water, life abundantly. Blood, the sufferings for identifying with him. It all flow from him. So ask yourself, my decision to follow Christ, what has it cost me? I have too many things I can share with you here, but there's no time that I can tell you cost me. It cost me friends. Friends that are in position to give me millions. Dash. But anytime I come across and say, you say the Bible, you want the Bible, the Bible now. Because anytime I'm around them, I'm a condemnation to them. And you go now, you say you leave us, you go your way now, we go our way. It cost me that. It cost me. That's the truth. I'm not even talking about ministry. I'm not even talking about ministry. Because when this ministry started one time, I traveled for about one month. I was pursuing my payment. I was doing contract with the PTF. In those days, you know, the PTF during a bachelor period. And then, they were wasting my time in payment. I found myself staying in Abuja there for about, over a month. Now, one day, one of the prophets in the church, we were very few, we were just starting the ministry. One of the prophets called me, Sir, where are you? I said, I'm there, Abuja now. I'll tell you, say, tell you, go. He said, the Holy Ghost told him last night to tell me that I've abandoned his work. I'll be, I'm going to stay there pursuing money. He said, stay there and see how you will get the money. I called my sister working in the airport. Any flight to Lagos now? He said, yes, in the next one hour. I said, get a ticket for me. I called my driver to the airport that evening back to Lagos. Three days I fasted asking the Lord to forgive me. The next week, they called me from Abuja that that payment was done and that I should not bother to come to Lagos. That time, there was no e-payment where you can go to branches. They said, I should not bother. They have paid it into my account, which is never done. They went to my bank, paid it in, and then the bank manager was calling me after. They have paid in your money from PTF, you don't have to bother to come to Abuja. Go to our branch in Victoria Island and just identify yourself and draw any money you want. That is God for you. From that day! Hallelujah! If I have to be absent from church, it must be a reason that God himself will understand. So, with all the connections I have, when I say, Moses, come now, come now, come and do this now, when I look at it, may God know why I'm you. Uh, I beg, I feel send somebody come. Now you, you want come by yourself. 
I go talk from my heart, Holy Ghost fire pursue you. Now me, you want me I come? They want to put me in trouble. It is cost. It costs me that. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. What of you, sister? What of you, brother? Is there any man that cut off from you because you gave your life to Christ? It is part of the cross. Part of the things you will go through. Yes, now. Some people lose their job because of Christ. Hey, let me rush it. My time is gone. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Luke chapter 9. There's a way Luke put it. Amen. I like the way Luke put his own. Luke, Luke chapter 9. And let me read it. Uh, from verse 23. Amen. He said to them all. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross every month. Eh? How awful? Daily. Daily. And follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. For what is a man advantage if he gain the whole world and lose himself or be cast away? And he added, For whosoever shall be ashamed of me and of my words, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he shall come in his own glory and in his Father's and of his holy angels. Mark chapter 10. The fellowship of his suffering is what we are looking at. Now, in Mark chapter 10, verse 28. This is the way he put it. Then Peter began to say unto him, Lo, we have left all and have followed thee. And Jesus answered and said, Verily I say unto you, There is no man that has left house, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my sake and the gospels. But he shall receive a hundredfold now in this time houses and brethren and sisters and mothers and children and lands with everybody shout with what? With what? You will receive a hundredfold houses, land, brethren, sisters. In addition, what will you receive? Persecution. Why are you afraid of saying it? It must come to pass. Don't be afraid. <laughs> With persecutions and in the world to come, what will you receive? Eternal life. Because Apostle Paul also added in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 10 and verse to 12, where he emphasized, he said, all that shall live godly in Christ shall suffer persecutions. And see what Apostle Paul went through in 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Read it from verse 23 up to verse 33. See what he went through. The beatings he received. One time they threw him through the, the fence. They smuggled him out. See the suffering this man received because of his stand for the gospel. One of the apostles, they were beating them. They were putting them in prisons. Killing them. Stripes that Jesus Christ received, they too, they received it. It's true. One of those that died in the first church age, the second church age, they were killing them up to the third church age. Killing. Even up to now, there are nations where Christians are persecuted and killed just because they are Christians. And they are not afraid to say, they are killing us, therefore I will declare to be a Hindu. No. They still stand for that gospel. Anybody standing for gospel in the face of death, there's a revelation behind it. There's a revelation of who that Jesus Christ is until they are ready to die for him. That's why in Romans chapter 6, verse 3, Apostle Paul said, we glory in tribulations also. There's a revelation that we make man take that type of decision. James chapter 1, verse 2, say, he, say, he say, count it all, joy. When you fall into diverse 
temptations. And Christ's suffering. Read the scripture of 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19 to 25. Time is gone. Let me just give you those scriptures. Christ's suffering. His suffering was to leave us an example. That is the way Peter put it. So that when you are suffering, our master also suffer like us. So there's nothing new when you find yourself suffering like that. That's why in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12 to verse 19, all he was emphasizing there is that you should rejoice in as much as you are partakers of Christ's sufferings. Rejoice. There's a revelation behind it. Amen. Now the third thing in that Philippians chapter 3 verse 10 is that it's talking about being made conformable unto his death. And remember our destiny is we are predestined Romans 8 29 to be conformed to his image. So that when you see me you see Christ. Somebody should look at you and say you're a Christian. Not because of the way you dress. Not because of the size of your Bible. Not because every day you are telling them you are going to church. But because of a life that you live. When they come close to you. Conforming ourselves to his image. He obeyed. He did not allow the sufferings to make him draw back. To change his mind. That's what Philippians chapter 2 was saying. He obeyed even up to the death on the cross. Let nothing scare you. But I still say it. That he obeyed like that. There is a revelation. Because even Christ himself, Philippians chapter 2 said, he said, for the joy that was set before him. There was a revelation. Christ saw the end of the whole matter. He knew. Hallelujah. The position he will occupy, if only he can obey up to the death on the cross. For the joy that is set before him, Jesus Christ, he obeyed, he obeyed, he obeyed, even unto the death on the cross. And we too, because of the hope, the hope that is in us. Hallelujah. And something we need to know about what is awaiting us. That will enable us to go through all the difficulties we may be going through here. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That can make you take a stand like Apostle Paul. Counting everything that he has has done for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Just that final admonishment from Apostle Paul. Let's look at it again. Verse 11 of Philippians chapter 3. Finally, thank God I'm able to come to final <laughs> as I close. He says, if by any means, verse 11, Philippians chapter 3, that is his wish, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable unto his death. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Uh -huh. He said, not as though I had already attained. See, I like people who are humble like that. I see people, you are doing something wrong. When we are correcting you, you say, I know my standing with my God. I know how I work with my God. That is, you are having a self-confidence. The same apostle Paul said, he who thinks he stand, take heed, lest he fall. He said, not as though I had already attained apostle Paul, that God took him to the third heavens. He saw things. Hallelujah. The privilege apostle Paul had, none of us in this grace age has had that opportunity. So much until God refused to remove the thorn in his flesh, which is his eye problem that he could not see properly as a result of that encounter, that light that struck him. He could not see properly with that eye. He besought the Lord three times that the Lord should take away that thorn in his flesh. But what did God say? Hallelujah. 
He said, my grace is sufficient for you. <laughs> he said, my strength is made perfect in weakness. Yes. So that you will know, hallelujah, that you are a human being. You have known too much. The anointing on you is too much. So that you will not be proud and think you are anything. While you are restoring the sight of other people, miracle signs and wonders, handkerchief from his heart pocket, demons will fly, blind people will receive eye, but that same handkerchief cannot heal his own eye. So that you will know. Why? Because of the abundance of the revelation that God gave him. And yet that man is saying, I have not even attained yet, oh. What of you and I, what do we know concerning Christ? What experience have we received that will make you puff up? When you should humble yourself so that you can know him the more and know how to walk with him. When Apostle Paul at the end, he said, walk out your salvation in fear and trembling. There's something he knows. He went back to the wilderness. All of them took off from Egypt, but not all of them made it to the promised land. 